In this video, we're going to be talking about standard error and the central limit theorem. So now first, just, you know, as a bit of an overview, what is a normal distribution? Well, for any variable, like, like income or age, if we're thinking about what, what sort of values do different people in our population have of, of income? And so a nor if it's normally distributed, what that means is whatever the average is, that in fact is the most common. So if the, you think of the y-axis as the frequency of that observation, and this is the observation, so let's say an income of $50,000 is like really common, and the more further out you are, the less common it is to observe that thing, right? So it's getting less and less common, and so this distribution is an example of a normal distribution. So uh, a normal distribution, not only is the, the mean most common, but also it's symmetric. It sort of goes, you know, an equal amount on the left and the right. It's not sort of skewed. And further, what we have is there's a very specific distribution as far as, oh yeah, exactly 68% of all values are within one standard deviation. So if you know that the income is 50,000, and let's say I also told you that the standard deviation of income, so if I give you that the mean is 50K, and the standard deviation is 10K, that basically within 10,000, uh, you're gonna have 68% of people have an income of somewhere between 40K and 60K, and 95% are within two standard deviations. So if you plus or minus two standard deviations, meaning 20 grand from this, well then 95% of, you've basically captured 95% of all incomes in the world. So this is just first of all recapping what a normal distribution is. Now let's use that to then talk about what is a, uh, what is the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem basically says that as long as uh, if your sample size is at least 30-ish that the sampling distribution, I'll talk a sec about what that means, so the sampling distribution, uh, which is also called the sample mean distribution, so the sample mean distribution, so that is normal even if the original population isn't, right, so even if the original population isn't, the sampling distribution is going to be normal with mean mu and standard deviation of s over root n. So specifically, the notation for this is saying that the distribution of x bar is normal. So this sort of tilde means like the distribution, capital N means normal, and the mean is mu. But the standard deviation, instead of uh, you know s, it's going to uh, use sigma. Uh, is going to be sigma over root n. So here it sort of doesn't matter if we use uh, s or sigma, we mean standard deviation. Again, it just depends on whether you're referring to the sample of the population. But essentially, that's what the central limit theorem essentially says. So now, what exactly does this mean? What exactly is a sampling distribution? Well, a sampling distribution is basically saying if instead of asking one person at a time, what's your income, what's your income, what's your income, and making a distribution of that. What if we asked like 50 people at a time? What if we asked 100 people at a time what their income is? Average those 100 people, uh, and then we got something. So let's say, so if n is 100, so if n equals 100, uh, then basically x bar uh, is, you know, the average of those 100 people. So the distribution of that, though, because here's the thing, there's a lot more than just 100 people in our uh, population, and so if we just sample a random 100 of them, get an income, then whatever that income is, that's not necessarily, you know, if you were to then sample another 100 people, you might get a totally different X bar, right? So the point is that there exists many different possible X bars, many different sample averages based on which 100 people you picked. So essentially, if we look at what are all the possible X bars that we would get, Essentially, that's also going to be normally distributed, and more specifically, it's also going to have the exact same mean that our population does. So if x is distribution, so if x 
is distributed, we said early earlier with an average of 50k and uh, you know 10,000 as these so these are numbers are in thousands. So an average of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Well then the x bar, that distribution is also going to be normal with the same average. But as we might guess, it's going to be a lot less spread out. What that means is, how, what's the likelihood, you know, the y value again is the frequency of it. How likely am I to find somebody who's making 200k a year? Well, you know, yeah, you might find somebody, but you're a lot less likely to find 100 people whose average is all the way up at 200k, right? So the point is that compared to your x, your x bar is going to be way narrower, a lot more of those sample averages are going to be at the population average compared to if you were to ask one person at a time, right? So this green distribution here is the X bar. Uh, and so its distribution is going to be specifically its standard deviation. Instead of being the standard deviation of the population, which is 10,000, uh, so it's going to be not just 10,000, but $10,000 divided by root N. And N was 100, so divided by root 100. So and root 100 on your calculator is 10, so 10,000 divided by 10 is 1,000, so this is basically just 1,000. So in thousands, that's just 1. So notice it's like a lot less spread out. The standard deviation is only 1 instead of uh, 10. And that is called standard error. The standard error is literally the standard deviation of x bar, not of x. That standard deviation of x is just standard deviation, but the standard deviation of x bar, how different samples, averages, possible sample averages are distributed, that's your standard error. Standard error is literally standard deviation of x bar. And so as a formula, you could say that standard error, se, is literally s over root n. Right? Cool. So that is your standard uh, error, that's central limit theorem. One more just sort of application of how this works, because uh, we looked at a population that was originally distributed. What if your population originally was not dis uh, normally distributed? For example, here's a, a variable that's definitely not normally distributed. What if you were to ask people the question, how many times have you been to prison? Well. It, most people's answer, the modal response is that they've been to prison zero times. Okay, so zero, the frequency of zero is, you know, really high. And then how many people went to prison one time? All right, a lot less, two times even fewer, and so on. And there might be some, you know, like a heap over here, you know, career criminals who have gone multiple times. And so point is, this distribution totally does not look like a bell curve. It is not symmetric around the mean. Yeah, it's not, you know, uh, and so here the mean, let's say that the average number of times for, you know, for all intents and purposes, let's just say it's uh, 1.4 or something. So if the average of all of these uh, numbers, the average is 1.4. Notice most people are way below the average rather than most people being at the average. Right? The average is not the most frequent observation like it would be true for uh, a normal distribution. So here, uh, the point of all this is that this is not a normal distribution, uh, and so we could say the distribution of x here, we're not going to put the n because it's not normal, but its mean, let's say, is 1.4, and a standard deviation, just making this up, let's say is 0 0.2, right? But now, what if I were to ask, I don't know, 40 people at once? If I were to ask 40 people, what's your, how many times have you been to prison? An average is the number of times that those 40 people have been to prison. All right, that's one value. Then I would have to take another sample, ask 40 other people, how many times have you been to prison? Get another X bar, and another X bar, and another X bar. And the point is that the distribution of that will be, even though this is not normally distributed, I'll just make it on the same graph, that will still be like this, you know. So essentially, that's still going to average out to 1.4, and that, in fact, will be symmetric and normal like this. So the x bars distribution is still, it's going to be normal. It's still going to have the same average of 1.4, but its standard deviation instead of 0.2 is going to be 0.2 over root 40. Because, again, the standard error, which is the standard deviation of this guy, is this over root n. 
Uh, yeah, which again makes sense because what, what this means is zero, even though zero is really common here, zero is not likely here because what this is saying is if you were to ask 40 randomly selected people, the fact that uh, it's very uncommon for you to have all 40 of them being zero because that's the only way to average out to be zero, right? All 40 of them being zero, that's a lot less likely even though it's very likely if you were to ask one person that their answer is zero, right? So that is the central limit theorem and that's what standard error is.